Royal Theater, starring Joel McRae and Constance Moore in Smokey. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. William Keeley. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Some 20 years ago, Will James, one of the West's great writers, got out of the saddle long enough to pen a simple yet thrilling story about a horse. As a result, from the rough and tumble country of cattle stampedes and gun-toting cowboys comes Smokey, an epic saga that has gone through many editions and been translated around the world. Tonight we bring you 20th Century Fox's great screen version of that story. And our stars are Joel McRae and the lovely Constance Moore. The only character missing from our cast, uh, that is, so far as personal appearance goes, is Smokey himself. But I'm sure you can visualize a seal brown stallion, sleek and spirited, his black mane flying against the blazing red, soft blues and yellows of the Utah Rangers. And I can't imagine a better man to gentle him, as the phrase goes, than Joel McRae. On to our play, Act One of Smokey, starring Joel McRae as Barkley and Constance Moore as Julie. As our theater lights are lowered, the curtain rises on Clint Barkley. I remember the first time I ever saw Smokey. I was traveling then, getting as far as I could from Texas, but heading no place in particular. I reined in when I saw this herd of horses in the valley. Cow hands were bringing him in from winter pasture, except Smokey had no intention of being brought in. Suddenly, he cut loose from the rest of the herd and made for the canyon. The men tried to head him off, but Smokey was too smart for them and too fast. I guess maybe it was kind of foolish of me to feel the way I did because the horse wasn't mine, but when I saw him proud and wild, I, well, I knew he was for me, and so I went after him. A few hours later, at the Rocking R Ranch. Well, there's the herd, Judy. Well, they seem to be in pretty good shape. It's going to be a job getting those bronx ready for the market by the first of the month. Oh, fine talk for a gal who knocked Indians off the tailgate of a covered wagon. Did I say I was worried? About time you brought those horses in, Jim. Some foreman you are. They're worth taking time with, Miss Richards. How do they look, Miss Julie? Fine. Have any trouble with them? Oh, they're a little skittish. But they're bound to be out running wild for so long. Now, what about that steel brown stallion? Did you bring him in this time? No, ma'am. Outsmarted you again. Looks like I'll have to bring him in myself. <laughs> He's all yours, Miss Richards. I'll bet you two. Wait a minute. What's that over the rise there? What? Why, it's him. The stallion. Somebody's driving him in. Who's that rider? He got me, miss. Not one of our boys. Sure made a monkey out of you, whoever he is. How'd he find the stallion? I don't know. Willie! Yeah, Jeff! That fella coming in. Tell him we want to see him. Now. Afternoon. Nice work, young fella. Bringing in that stallion. I hope he's worth the trouble you took. He sure looks good to me. Make a fine saddle horse if he's broke right. Oh, uh, you the owner of the rocking arm, ma'am? No, I am not the boss. <laughs> Just bossy. <laughs> Outfit belongs to my granddaughter here. Uh, what'd you say your name is? Clint Barkley. Well, meet the boss. Mr. Barkley, Miss Richards. How do you do, Miss Richards? Hello. I heard you were hiring some extra wranglers. Oh, well, I was thinking about it, but I don't believe I mentioned it yet. It must have been your thinking I heard then. Maybe we could use an extra man. How about it, Jeff? Oh, this is Mr. Hicks, our foreman. Oh, where have you been working, Barkley? Texas, Arizona, New Mexico. I mean, what else? Most all of them, one time or another. Oh, don't write in one spot for long, huh? Depends on the spot. Some I like, some I don't. This place, I think I like. Can you break a horse? I think so. There's 30 broncs in that corral that'll have to have the rough edges off of them by the first of the month. Think you could handle, say, half of them? I'd sure like to try. Okay, Jeff? Okay. That's the bunkhouse over there, Barkley. I'll give you orders later. Thanks. And thank you, Richard. What's the matter, Jeff? Don't you like him? Oh, I'd just like to know a little something about the men we hire, Miss Julie. When a man doesn't want to give some reference, there might be something he's trying to hide. Well, there's room enough around here to hide it. Come on, Graham. Let's go see what we've really got in that corral. Hey, 
a new man sure worker, Jeff. That six bolts he stopped today. Yeah. Doing all right, Willie. Wonder what's made him drift around so much. Oh, some of us just can't stay put. We're like flies. Yeah. Hey, look. We're gonna work out that stallion. Well, this is something I want to see. Gonna saddle him in the chute, Clint? No, we don't want to rush this one. I don't think I'll even try to ride him today. Now, he'll be plenty salty when you do get to him. Well, here goes. I'll get a rope on him first. Take it easy. Take it easy, Johnny. Nobody's going to hurt you. You're not going to like this, but it's got to be done. Hang on to that rope, Clint. Hang on. Yeah, I'm trying to. Watch it, Bartley. He'll kill you. Put your rope on this swimming pool. He won't give me. That's it. Give it another turn. All right. Now fight. Go on. Get it out of your system. Look at him. <laughs> Easy now. You sure got your eye on me, haven't you? That's good. The more you watch, the more you'll see of me, and the more you'll learn. Hey, what's going on there? He's working on the renegade, miss. Come on, Willie. Now, we got work to do. You yeah. better keep back. You better keep back, Miss Richards. This fellow's not very polite yet. Oh, I'm used to horses, thanks. Yeah, but he's not used to humans. He don't know quite what to make of us. Oh, bad one, huh? No, he's not bad. He's just got a mind of his own. It's going to take plenty of time with him. Why? Think maybe he'll bring a better price than the others? Well, you're not going to sell him with that bunch of crows, are you? Oh, decide that when the time comes. After all, that's our business, selling horses. Yeah, I know, but this one's in a class by himself. Well, what would you suggest, Mr. Barkley? Keep him here on the ranch. He'll make one of the finest cow horses in the country if we break him right. Well, incidentally, you'd enjoy doing that, wouldn't you? Yes, ma'am. Well, right now, I think you've got your hands full breaking in the others. So should turn him loose. You're the boss, miss. But you better get out of the corral before I do. I told you, I'm used to horses. Okay. Yep, boss. Whoa! Well, I warned you, miss. You all right? Yes, thanks. I'm fine. I never saw a man or a girl climb a corral fence as fast as you just did. Ooh, what a horse. Yeah, what a horse. <laughs> I worked on the horse every spare moment I had. In a week or so, he calmed down enough for me to get him halter broke. And so that day, I led him beyond the south pasture, down by a stream. I'm leaving you here for a while, Smokey. I'm tying you up. But you got plenty of grass and plenty of water and plenty of time to think things over. Just remember, the better you treat this rope, the better it's going to treat you. I'll see you later. The men were playing cards in the bunkhouse when I got back. Willie the cook was singing some song about Laredo. I found a young cowboy all wrapped in white linen, wrapped in white linen, man cold as the clay. He said, beat the drum slowly and play the fast lowly. Play the dead march as you carry me along. Take me out of Laredo, then lay the sod over me. For I'm a young cowboy, and I know I've done wrong. Fine, Willie. Willie, if you can only cook as good as you can sing. Ain't that right, Clint? You're sure a bird with that guitar, Willie. (laughs) Well, thanks, Clint. Say, uh, you ever been in Laredo, Clint? No, I never have. I thought you said you worked in Texas, Barkley. I did. Well, the Raiders are center of the cow business down there, isn't it? Yeah. Won't you? Your deal. Didn't you like Texas? Oh, I liked it all right. Then why'd you leave? Well, I just thought maybe I'd like it better up here. Want to sit in the game, Clint? No, thanks. I'm going out and do a little work. Hey, ambitious, ain't he? Working on Sunday. Yeah, he's as jumpy as one of them bronks he's been a-busting. A man's bound to be a little jumpy when he's hiding something. Maybe. Or maybe he's just tending to his own business like a lot of us ain't. His hat was broke back and his furs was a jingling. And as he approached, he was singing the song. Julie here, Miss Richards. What's the matter? I thought she was playing cards. Well, I just want to talk to her for a minute. Can't she even have her Sunday to herself? She was fixing to go swimming. You want to see me, Jeff? Oh, yes, I, uh... Miss Julie, as long as I worked for your father, he never had any complaints about the way I manage his ranch. Well, have I ever complained? No, ma'am. What about this fellow Barkley? You figure on keeping him here after he gets through with those bronks? Well, he seems to know his job. Yes, he does. He's a good hand. But you know, uh, Miss Julie, uh, 
news has a way of getting around. Especially if it's bad. I was talking to a couple of boys in town yesterday, and near as I can figure it out, Barkley was mixed up in a pretty nasty scrape down in Texas. Huh. Some folks would look for a rattlesnake in a bunch of violence. What sort of a scrape, Jeff? Some money disappeared, a lot of money. I don't believe it. Well, the boys wouldn't have any reason for just saying that, Mrs. Richard. Well, what does Barkley have to say about it? Well, I keep trying to edge it out of him, but he's always clamming up. That fella's no jailbird. And suppose he is. Why, there ain't a cow hen on this ranch that hasn't wound up at least one Saturday night in jail. And how do you suppose your father got here, Star Julie? Graham. Well, he just didn't come by that string of horses he swapped for this ranch. Are you trying to say Dad stole those horses? Well, no. No, but he sure got them awful cheap. <laughs> Excuse me. Both of you, I'm going swimming. All right, all right. I know you've got pretty legs. You don't have to show them off to me. When the... Yeah, I guess you don't like school much, Sonny. There are a lot of things more important than kicking up your heels and having a good time. <laughs> One thing you have to learn is how to get along with people, see? You understand? Sure you do. You haven't got this bump of knowledge for nothing. Hello. Oh, Miss Richards. Hello. For a moment, I didn't know it was a horse you were talking to. Kind of looks like Smokey and I are trespassing on the swimming hole. Smokey? Oh, I hope you don't mind my naming him Smokey. I just figured that, well, where there's smoke, there's fire, and you've got to admit he's got plenty of fire. Oh, it's a good name for him. I see you're still coddling him. Yeah, but on my own time. You know, today's Sunday. You think he's something pretty special, don't you? You bet. Don't you? Uh, Smokey's always been something special. I used to catch glimpses of him when I was out riding. He was an adventurous little cuss, even when he was a yearling. He's wild, though, Clint. Completely wild. Oh, you get over there. Hello, Smokey. Hiya, boy. I'm afraid he hasn't developed much of a sociable streak yet. It's amazing how much you two have in common. How do you mean? Well, from what I hear, you're not very sociable yourself. I guess just doing my job as a wrangler isn't enough for Jeff. I'm just, just looking after my interests. Look, I don't like to say this, but he's heard some ugly rumors about you. Oh? If he believes them, I guess that means I'm through, huh? Not necessarily. A little explanation would clear up everything. But it isn't as easy as that. Certain things you can never explain to some people, and the few who would understand don't need an explanation. I'll buy that. Thanks. But if my curiosity ever gets the better of me, I'm going to ask Smokey. See you later. Sure has got pretty legs. Oh, shut up, Smokey. I don't have to talk about you all the time, do I? Hey, Bart. Oh, hello, young fella. Where'd you come from? Off the road. I'm looking for somebody named Clint Barkley. A friend of his? Yeah, yeah, a friend of his. Well, they told me in town that he Try was... Try the barn there. He's in the blacksmith shop, I think. Okay, thanks, bud. You're welcome, bud. Jim Crackhorn, and I don't care. Jim Crackhorn, and I don't care. Jim Crackhorn, and I don't care. Oh, my sister's gone away. Hiya, Clint. Frank. Hey, you're a hard man to find. Maybe you didn't look hard enough. You could have found me at the Laredo jail. That's where I've been the last eight months. Yeah. Yeah, I just heard about that last week. I heard you'd been in jail. You sure that's the first you heard of it? Sure, naturally. If I'd known before, I'd have come on back and told him what really happened. Yeah. Yeah, I know you would, Frank. Well, anyhow, I, I want to thank you for what you did for me. What I did for you? Well, at least you, you didn't squeal on me. If I had, nobody would believe me. Yeah, I... I guess you're in a pretty tough spot at that. Well, I sure wish I'd known before. You didn't come here to tell me that. What did you come for? Well, Clint, I need a job. I was just thinking that maybe you'd put in a good word for me around here. I wouldn't put in a good word for you again if you never got a job. Now, get out of here. Oh, Clint, now... Oh, you know how I am. Every time I get a job, I just seem to get into some kind of trouble. I don't know. Now, I've been thinking that if... Well, you know, if I could work along with you... You'd sort of keep an eye on me. Keep me in line. Oh, I, I know you're sore at me. I don't blame you. But I'd sure appreciate another chance. 
Well, Clint, if you won't help me, who will? All right. But look, I like my job here, see? I like it better than any job I ever had before. And if you start no, anything... No, 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 Clint. I, I promise I won't. I'll do everything you tell me to do. Morning, Clint. Morning. Hi, Baldy. Hi. Hey, don't blame you for liking it here, Clint. I've only been here two days, but sure is a good outfit. Okay, now get to work. Well, Foreman sent me to watch you. Said I might learn something. I doubt it. Smokey might learn something. I might learn something. Oh, come on, Clint. Hey, hey, you're saddling the Bronx, huh? That's right. You want me to hear him down while you put the saddle on? I'll saddle him. I don't think he's going to be much trouble. Yeah, well, how about when you get on that dog? He's liable not to like it. You better stand back, Frank. Well, sure. Okay, okay. All right, Smokey. Easy, boy. Easy now. Easy. That's the way I used to bake horses, Frank. Easy. One step at a time. That's the difference between us, Baldy. You don't believe in shortcuts. I do. Yeah, you would. That's the boy. Now, easy, Smokey. This isn't going to hurt you. No, it's just a saddle, see? Go on, smell it. That's it. That's the boy. Here we go now. That's the stuff. That didn't scare you now, did it? Okay, we'll tighten the cinch. How's that, huh? Too tight? Easy, Smokey. Easy. Two bucks he gets thrown, Frank. What do you say? No business, Baldy. I'm no sucker. Stand back, you guy. Yep. Hang with him. Hang with him, Clint. A couple of days later, I rode Smokey out of the corral. A cow pony isn't a pleasure horse. He's a work horse, and he's got to learn how to work. Once he's saddle-wise, the first thing you teach him is neck reining so that he'll turn with the slightest pressure. And he's got to get used to things, to the man on his back, to a coyote hiding in the grass, or a chipmunk scooting across the trail right under his nose. Well, we worked together on my own time before sunup or at dusk, and Smokey caught on fast. He'd gotten used to the rope sailing around his head, but when I shot it past him and caught that bush, it was another story. Smokey, you're not going to be scared of that, are you? Oh, now. Oh, Smokey. Oh. I brought the bush in for him to see so that he'd know that no matter what was on the other end of the rope, why it wouldn't hurt him. And then he had to learn the feel of the weight on the rope. He had to get wise to the sudden shift of the saddle when the weight pulls hard on the horn and jerks against his withers. Later that day, I roped Smokey's first cat. <laughs> That's all right, Smokey. That's good. Good. He learned fast. And what he learned, he never forgot. And I was mighty proud of him. He wouldn't make a liar out of me, not Smokey. Best cow pony in the country, I told Julie. And that's just what he was turning out to be. Hey, Clint. Doing all right, Willie. He's doing fine. I'll let him cool off here in the corral. Well, he ought to do all right, the way you've been nursing him along. Yeah. It's worth it, Willie. He really catches on to things. <laughs> He's just kidding you, Clint. First chance he gets, he'll go high-tailing it right back to them hills. I'm not going to give him the chance. He sure is a pretty little rascal at that, ain't he? Look at him nuzzling you. Why, this son of a gun, he... He likes you. Uh, yeah. You got those browns ready up off me? Yeah, they're all over there in the other corral. What about him, Smokey? He doesn't go, Jeff. Why not? Well, isn't Miss Richards keeping him here on the ranch? She didn't say anything about it to me. Run him in with the others, Frank. Sure, Jeff, sure. Now, look, Jeff. That horse will be worth a lot more to you here than the price you could get for him. Well, if he's as good as you've been saying, we ought to get plenty. Well, anyway, you can't send him out with the others. He's not ready yet. Not ready? No. Well, you've been riding him, haven't you? Get him out, Frank. You're not getting sentimental over a horse, are you, Clinter? All right, Nuthead. Outside. 
You heard me move. Look out, Frank. Smokey, stop it. Oh, boy. Ooh. I can handle him. Yeah, I just saw you try it. I told you he wasn't ready. I'll ready him. I'll throw him right on his back. You let that horse alone. Said not hit the killer. I said let him alone. Okay, Clint. Don't have to get sore about it. Just wish I was breaking him, though. Now, look, Barkley. I don't know what you're trying to do with that stallion, but you take the fight out of him or I'll turn him back to the hills where he belongs. Okay, Jeff. Sure. <laughs> He'd have his chance to prove his stuff when we went out on a cattle roundup. We'd be gone for days. And if Jeff wasn't satisfied by the time we'd get back, I'd be willing to turn Smokey back to the hills. I was that sure of him. I wish I was only half as sure of Frank. Frank, who told me that all he wanted was just one more chance. Boy, Clint, just look at him. Mmm, what a herd. Yeah, we'll have a work cut out for us for the next week or so. No, I wasn't thinking of the work. Yeah, there's over a thousand heads there. What they can sell cattle for today, I'd settle for a couple of hundred. One more crack like that. Oh, oh, what's the matter, Clint? Don't you know when I'm kidding? I guess I don't. Just remember, Frank, you're punching cattle here, not selling them. In a moment, we'll continue with the second act of Smokey. Starring Joel McRae and Constance Moore. Many eyes watch the graceful ship sail into the harbor, including the eyes of espionage agents who watch and report. In every world port, they watch the cargo ships and military vessels. Agents find it easy to watch the harbors. A more difficult job is to gather classified information. This is almost impossible unless someone turns straighter. Someone gets careless or there's loose talk. The outcome of wars and the course of world history has changed because people who should have known better talked. Now, here's Mr. Keeley at the microphone. We continue with Act Two of Smokey, starring Joel McRae as Clinton Barkley and Constance Moore as Julie. Well, we were still out on the range rounding up the cattle. And one morning, right after breakfast, Jeff Hicks, the foreman, called me over. Okay, Barkley, we got to get after the strays this morning. You better ride over to Box Canyon, and Willie, you do the same on Rock Ridge. Take Frank with you. You could... Hey, wait a minute, Barkley. What horse you riding? The one I'm on, Smokey. Yeah, trust him, so ain't you? He's earned a chance, Jeff. Okay, maybe he has. If he does a day's work on those strays, maybe we'll keep him at the ranch after all. You'll have to take my word for it. I'll be alone. I'll take your word. Thanks. What do you say, Smokey? Let's go. I guess we were about ten miles out when it happened. It wasn't Smokey's fault. We'd cornered a stray steer among the rocks. But instead of staying cornered, he charged us. Smokey fell, and me with him. I don't know how long I was unconscious. But when I came to, Smokey was standing next to me, wondering why I didn't get up. Hello, Smokey. It's all right, boy. It wasn't your fault. I guess I... I guess I got a few busted ribs. <sighs> Gotta get back to the ranch. <sighs> Pull up a little, boy. No, no, no use, I guess. I, I just can't make the saddle. Get up and we can't stay here. They'd never find us here. Only one thing to do, Smokey. Just one thing. If I can get my arm through that stirrup, like, like this, if I can tie it tight enough with my bandana, tight enough for you to drag me, maybe we can. Maybe. My only chance, Smokey. It's up to you, boy. It's up to you. Ah, five straight is a good morning's work, Willie. Really. Wonder how Clint's doing. I don't know. Say, say, when are you going to pay me that 20 bucks you owe me? I told you, Willie, next payday. Yeah, the payday's come and gone. Oh, there'll always be another payday, Willie. Will you quit worrying? Hey, hey, look. Ain't that Smokey down there? 
Yeah. Yeah, I had his dragon something. Well, that's the man. That's Clanty's dragon. Oh, he's thrown him, man. Well, it's no good. Horse, give me your rifle. Well, take it easy, will you? And use your eyes. Clint's tied to the stirrup. That's his bandana, ain't it? Yeah. He's tied himself to the stirrup. Well, he'll be dragged to death. What are we standing here for? Smokey's still half wild. Clint's the only one he let come near him. If we ride down on him now, no telling what that horse will do. No, yeah, but we can't stay here. That's right. We'll follow him. And quietly. Come on. I hope I can sneak around and throw a rope on that jughead. He won't let you get near him. Nobody else either. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, how far has he dragged him already? Clint may be dead now. Yeah, maybe. But you can bet your life he will be a gone if we don't let Smokey alone. And at least he's heading toward the ranch. Yeah, and Clint's hanging on to the right stirrup, too. Son of a gun. Any other horse would have kicked his brains out for that. Look, I'll get the strays back to camp. You follow Clint, will you? I'll meet you at the stream. <laughs> Corral, that horse dragged him all the way back here. Well, what are you waiting for? Get his arm free of that stirrup. Miss Julie, stay back. That horse won't let anybody get near him. But Clint, look, he's he's all. Yeah, I know, Miss. He's pretty badly banged up. He's not feeling it, though. Been unconscious most of the way, best as we could tell. Oh, how are we going to get Clint out of the corral? It's all right, Smokey. It's all right, boy. Easy, boy, easy. We're not going to hurt you. We're not going to hurt Clint either. No, sir. Willie. Well, he'll trample him. Yeah, he's going to fight anything we can do to get Clint away. I'll get him away. He won't fight this. No, wait a minute. No rifle yet. No, why not? Look, he's moving. Clint's moving. Yeah. Clint. Clint, can you get your arm loose? Clint, can you get it out of the stirrup? Sure. I'll try. He's getting it, miss. Clint. Clint. Once more, boy. Just once more and you'll have... That's it, Clint. You're loose now. So don't try to move again. Just, just lie there. Where is that rope now? Clint, I'll have to throw this rope around you. I'd rope the horse, but there's no telling what he'd do. Come on. Throw it. Slowly, Willie. Slowly. I'm pulling you over to the fence here, Clint. Hey, Frank. Yeah? Get around on that other side. Make up like you're trying to climb into the corral or something. Okay. Oh, easy, Willie. Okay. Easy. Walk over here. That's it, Frank. Look, he's going after you now. He thinks you're trying to get in. Well, hurry up. Will you before he busts his corral down? I got him, Frank. I got him. Oh, he's unconscious again. He's alive, though. Okay, Frank. Close the gate, Willie. Then get Clint up to the house. Graham's trying to get the doctor now. He's covered with bruises, miss. I don't think anything's busted, though, except them ribs. I, I... Take it easy, Clint. First to breathe, huh, boy? Keep quiet, Willie. Yeah. Please don't try to talk, Clint. Just lie still till the doctor gets here. Smokey? Oh, he's all right. Frank and Scrubby are out there looking after him right now. Just try not to move, Clint. Try not to move. Get, get in that stall. Doggone it. I said get. Just take it easy, will you, Frank? Take it easy, huh? One man wants to think no horse at all. Get in there and knock head off. Oh! Frank, Frank, you all right? Oh, he bit me. Bit me in the shoulder. Oh, he won't get away with that, Scrubby. Hey, stop hey. him. Uh, stop him, will you? He's he clipped wide. He's trying up now. Leave him alone. Okay. Okay. I'll leave him alone. But someday, Nothead, somebody's going to teach you manners. And that somebody might even be me. <laughs> this morning. What patient? I'm getting out of bed this afternoon. Oh, no, you're not. All right, open up your pajama coat. Huh? What for? I'm supposed to retape your ribs today. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. And Dr. Jameson can't get out again until next week. Oh, well, maybe we better just wait until next week then. Oh, come on now, come on. Okay. Now what? Well, first I'll just have to pull off this old adhesive tape. Oh, no, no, no. Now, don't, don't, don't. Well, what are you yelling about? I haven't even started yet. Yeah, I know, but you were going to. Now, look, I think the best way is to is to work it off bit by bit. See? Like this. Mm-hmm. See? See, it's coming off all right. Slowly, huh? Like this? Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nice and... Yo! <laughs> oh, now, is that so bad? Would have heard twice as much prolonging it. Well, you just killed me, that's all. Well, I'm glad we don't have to do this again next week. Hey, what's that? Ether. Oh, great. First you murder me and then you bring out the ether. Why didn't you bring out the ether first? <laughs> the ether's for your skin to clean it off. 
How do you know there's any skin left? <laughs> Come on, you'll have to help me with this. Here, hold that. Hmm. Say, this isn't too bad, is it? Look, I'm just trying to get this fresh tape around you. Now, take a deep breath. Oh, be careful. Hold the scissors, please. That's it. Oh, I saw Smokey today. You did? How is he? Fine. Is Frank Denton still working with him? No. Uh, oh, well, a blind man could see how you felt about somebody else handling Smokey, so I put him out to pasture. Oh. And then when you're well enough, you can pick up the schooling right where you left off. Okay? You bet it's okay. Thanks. Morning. Oh, morning, Mrs. Richards. Did Julie do a good job on those ribs? <laughs> she sure did. Just take a look, Graham. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, dear. Julie, I'm ashamed of you. That's no way to tape a man. Huh? Oh, this has got to come off right now. Oh, no, 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 no. There you go! My first day out of bed, a man drove in looking for me. A fellow named Gordon. He owned a gambling house in town. He asked me to step out to the bunkhouse for a minute. So you're Clint Barkley, huh? Well, you're the wrong Clint Barkley, then. What are you driving at, Mr. Gordon? Oh, just this, uh, this piece of paper. And I owe you for two hundred dollars. Signed, Clint Barkley. Yeah, except you're not the fellow who gave it to me. I've had it about a month. Uh, thought I'd come up and collect. Got any ideas who could have signed your name? Yeah, I might have. Who is it? Look, I don't like people signing my name to things. Do you mind if I hang on to this piece of paper? What for? If you let me handle it, maybe I can get your money for you. Well, that's okay, just so I get it. But if I don't, I'll be up to see you again. Hi, Clinter. What's on your mind, boy? You're the guy that wanted another chance, huh, Frank? Yeah, what about it? Just this, this IOU. <laughs> well, you're not getting sore about a little thing like that, are you? A little thing, huh? Signing my name, that's forgery, isn't it? What did you have in mind? He can't collect from me. Oh, that's the point, Clint. He can't collect from you, and he's got nothing on me. You're no good, Frank, and you never will be. Now, go draw your pay and get out of here. You've caused me all the trouble you're going to. Oh, quit worrying. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll pay Gordon. You bet you'll pay him, because I'm driving you to town right now and see that you do. Now, go on, pack your things. Oh, just a minute. Maybe I'm not ready to quit this job. Besides, you can't fire me. You're not the foreman around here. Not yet. I said go pack your things. You're making a mistake, Clinter. You wouldn't want me to tell the boss about you, would you? Of course, I, I think she's a little stuck on you, but... She might change her mind if she knew you spent quite a stretch in jail. She might even... Okay. Okay, Clint. I'll go. When did you get back from town? Oh, a half hour ago. Come on up on the porch. Had your supper? Yeah, Willie just fixed me a couple of eggs. <laughs> you know, Graham is sure you moved back to the bunkhouse because you like Willie's cooking better than hers. Uh, she's wrong about that. It's just that, well, I appreciate you taking care of me while I was laid up, but it's time I started back to work. Are you sure you're able to? Oh, I'm fine now. I stopped in at the doctor's, and he said I can ride again if I take it easy. You know, I thought maybe the first thing in the morning I'd go out and bring in smoke. How about you riding along? Oh, I'd love to. I'll fix up a nice lunch. Hey, get... hey, now, wait a minute. I'm supposed to be going back to work. Well, you still have to eat, don't you? Yeah, I guess. Say, do you suppose maybe we could bring Smokey in if we rode out tonight? Oh, now, Clint, look, you can wait till morning. Anyhow, how do you expect to find a black horse at night? Well, it would be fun to try. Go on, change your clothes, huh? Well, okay, I won't be long. Miss Julie! Miss Julie! Oh, Jeff, what is it? Scrubby's just come in from the South Meadow, Miss. Some of our prize cattle has been stolen. Stolen? Oh, now, wait a minute. Well, I didn't believe it either. Figured they just broke through the fence, maybe, but... Scrubby saw them. He rode up just as they were hauling them off in trucks. Smokey was in the south pasture, Jeff. Yeah, they got him too, Clint. Did Scrubby get a look at him? Not too good, miss. It's too dark for that, but whoever was in charge, Scrubby says he sounded just like Frank Denton. Excuse me, miss. I'm calling the sheriff. Reach the sheriff, Jeff. Yeah, he's coming right over. Barkley, what do you know about Frank Denton? Just about everything, I guess. Then you knew he asked me for his time today? I told him to. You told him to? Why? I had a good reason. Well, I guess you also had a good reason for talking me into hiring him. I thought I did. You know, Barkley, 
Ever since you've been here, I watched you like a hawk. Now, so far, you've been all right. You haven't slipped once. But what I want to know is, where do you fit into this? Now, now, just a minute, Jeff. You've no right to accuse Clint. You're not even sure it was Denton. After all, Scrubby didn't see him. He just heard a voice. I'm as sure as Jeff is that it was Denton. You are? Why? Because I know him. He's just crazy enough to try something like this. Well, if that's the case, why did you recommend him for a job? Because... Because he's my brother. Your brother? Ever since we were kids, I've covered up for him. I even went to jail for him. And then he came here looking for a job. He promised me he wouldn't make any trouble, and I believed him because, well, he knew how much this place meant to me. I guess I made a mistake. You think you might know where to find him? No, but I'd sure like to try. Then take the station wagon, Clinton. Get started. We'll follow later on, as soon as the sheriff gets here. <laughs> Act three of Smokey, starring Joel McRae and Constance Moore in a moment. Rumor had it that 20,000 people milled in and around the White House the day of Andrew Jackson's inauguration. The president, trying to escape the mob, was exhausted. Retreating, he stood against the wall of the East Room while friends with linked arms tried to protect him from the exuberant crowd. When the people had been lured outside by promises of lemonade and ice cream, Jackson escaped to a nearby hotel and went to bed. Another page in the White House story. Mr. Keeley returns to the microphone. It's time for the curtain for Act Three of Smokey, starring Joel McRae as Clint and Constance Moore as Julie. before, when I'd come to the Rocking R Ranch, I'd noticed an abandoned ranch not far from the spot where I'd first seen Smokey. And as I drove down the road that night looking for Frank, I knew it would be hard to find a better spot than that ranch for hiding out stolen cattle. But it wasn't an easy place to locate at night, five miles anyway from the highway. And if Frank was there, it wouldn't be for long. All right, you can't hang around here, Bart. Soon as you switch brands... Well, I'll finish, Brandon, then. Well, then put out the fires. They can be seen for miles. Relax. Put out the fires, Charlie. Get the stairs down to the road and back in the truck. You hear him, boys? Get going. Well, as far as I'm concerned, that's it, then, Bart. And our deal was cash on delivery. Right? Yeah, that's right. Here's the money. Thanks. From now on, it's my responsibility. Hurry up, boys. Get moving. Hey, what about that black horse? What's he still doing in the corral? Well, that horse isn't for sale. And uh, if it's all the same to you, I'm going to stick around for a while and gentle him down. Not afraid of him, are you? Uh-uh, not now I'm not. Not the way I got him roped. Poor horse. Just got to stand there and take what's coming to him. Well, I'll see you in a few days. Good thing we got him on tonight. We'll be out of this state in no time. Okay, Smokey. If you're ready, I am. I've got plenty of room this time. No stall where you can back me into a corner and sink your teeth into me. Ah, so you want to learn the hard way, huh? Now, well, that's good enough for me. Look, here's a cinch. You see this knothead? It's a cinch with steel rings, see? What's it feel like, huh? Yeah, I sure wish old Clinter could see this, Smokey. I sure wish that he was here. Clint. Yeah, Jeff? You were right. They've been here tonight. Your brother and some others. How do you know? Sheriff and I just found something here in the corral, Clint. Used to be a man. Who is it? Jeff, what have you... It's him, all right. Frank. Dead? Well, that's right, Barkley. Killed by a horse. Near as I can figure from the cinch belt and the broken ropes, he was beating the horse. The horse broke the ropes and, well, just went crazy, I guess. And then he must have just jumped the fence and headed for the hills. Smokey's probably 20 miles away by now. Well, I guess there's nothing more we can do. I'll uh, go out on the road, Jeff. Uh, get Miss Richards to sign a complaint against those fellows we caught with your cattle. I'll, 
Be back in a little while. I'm going to look for Smokey, Jeff. Don't you think it'd be better to forget him after what's happened? No. No, they'll say he's a killer now. And they'll never believe he had a reason for doing what he did. That's why I've got to find him before someone else does. Sure. Go ahead. I hope you find him. I spent weeks going from rancher to rancher. Glad that no one had caught him yet, but scared to death that sooner or later someone would find him before I did. Yeah, mister, I heard tell of that horse. He's somewhere around this part of the country. Real killer, ain't he? He he was a four year old. He stood about sixteen hands high. No, I ain't seen him. Some boys went out last month and tried to track him down, but he's too slick for him. He's probably over in Arizona by now. Well, thanks. Thanks, anyway. Well, I tell you, I've seen that horse, Mr. Nelson. I've seen him not a mile from this very spot. Now, look, Peters, I own a rodeo, and I'll give a thousand dollars for such an animal. But I'm beginning to believe there just ain't no such thing. You believe when we catch him. You're sure going to have the wildest bronc who was ever in a rodeo. I hope you're right. We could use... Hey, look. Look. Huh? Up there on the bluff. It's him. Hey, hey, there he is. I didn't know it's him. How do I know that rope? See, it's still around his neck, but when he busted loose, he killed that guy. No, mister. All I know is that that fellow owns a rodeo, hides the men to go looking for a horse like that. Don't know if they ever found him, though. Well, uh, when will they be back? Who knows? With all this snow, they wouldn't be coming down this side of the mountain anyway. They'd head over through the valley. I probably won't know what happens till next spring. up, we'll be snowed under for sure, Julie. And there's still a lot of our cattle out on Pine Ridge. Willie and Stubby brought in what they could. Almost froze to death doing it. Willie must have thought out considerable with all that caterwauling he's a doing. Graham, I'm worried. Huh? We have another heavy snowfall. We'll never bring that stock in. Don't worry. Jeff and I will pick him up the first thing in the morning. Gwen! Well, hello, stranger. Hello, Mrs. Richards. Hello, Julie. My, it's good to have you back. All these weeks, where have you been? Everywhere. Just ran into him riding back from town, Miss Julie. You find Smokey? No, ma'am, I didn't. Somebody else may have found him, though. Maybe not. Well, take your coat off. Sit down. Thanks. You wanted a cup of coffee, didn't you, Jeff? No, ma'am. I had three cups of supper. Then the one I'm getting you now will make four. Come on. Get. Huh? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Hey. You, uh, had any supper, Clint? Yeah, I stopped in town on my way here. Didn't you even find a trace of Smokey? Traces? Yeah. Yeah, I followed them into the Antelope Mountains, then into Arizona around the Tonto Basin. They had an early winter down there, and the trails were all snowed in. I just had to give it up. I'm sorry, Grant. Well, one way of looking at it. Smokey's probably got his freedom again. <laughs> Stop kidding yourself. You'll never be happy until you find him. He saved my life that time he dragged me back to the ranch. I can't forget that, can I? No. No, of course not. Well, when the trails open up next spring, you'll want to start looking for him all over again. Yeah, I guess I will. Okay, then. You have a job until the middle of March, and then you're fired. That's a deal, Julie. Thanks. But that March, when I started out again to look for Smokey, was the same thing all over. Reports, rumors, trails that ended nowhere. But all the while, as I found out long afterwards... Smokey had been captured. That spring, his new owner was Nelson, the man from the rodeo. That spring in Ogden, Smokey was packing him into the grandstand. Cougar, they called him. The world's wildest bucking bronco. Hey, 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 what you all been waiting for? Cougar, the wildest bucking bronco in all the world. Cougar, the man killer. $500 for any rider staying the limit. Hey, 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 Staff, Klamath, Bakersfield, Reno, cities and towns, while I was searching for him through forests and canyons. Smokey, the sweetest cow pony I ever knew, was building himself a reputation for being the wildest horse who ever lived. And the cash register jingled and the money rolled into Nelson's box office. 
The crowds came and cheered, and Smokey did his job as he always had. Season after season, Nelson grew richer because Smokey had a great heart and a great spirit. But one day he fell. He was hurt. Nothing goes wherever. It was news of this that came to me months later. The cow hand at the ranch was talking about horses. <clears throat> He'd once seen this cougar. It was at the rodeo in Cheyenne the night he got hurt. His description of the horse was enough to take me to Cheyenne to this man called Nelson. Yes, he had a horse like the one you're talking about, Mr. Barkley, except we called him Cougar. Where'd you first get hold of him, Mr. Nelson? Up in that Red Rock country. You know, he was the toughest animal I ever had in the show. That sounds like Smokey, all right. What happened to him after his accident? Well, I, I had to get rid of him, naturally. What does that mean? Well, he made so much money for me that I didn't want to shoot him. I gave him away. Who'd you give him to? Oh, some old man that runs a riding academy on Maple Street. He thought maybe he could fix him up. Get some use out of it. Uh, seems to me that I remember that horse. Sort of a red roan, wasn't he? No, seal brown, nearly black. He got a white star on his forehead and a look in his eyes. Well, if if you'd seen it, you'd remember. Uh, uh, would you be willing to go as high as a hundred dollars to get him back? I'd give a lot more than that. Where is he? <laughs> sure wish I knew. Ain't very often anybody offers me money like that for one of my horses. Well, Nelson told me he gave you the horse the last time his rodeo played here. Try and remember, will you? Yeah, they come to me, they all look pretty much alike. None of them ain't worth much, and when I get through them, they're worth less. I sell them for what I can get, mister. For dog food and sometimes for glue. Uh, what kind of a look did you say he had? If you can't remember, I can't tell you. Thanks. Thanks, anyway. <laughs> Pioneer Days in Cheyenne that week, and Scrubby and Willie had come along with me to see the celebration. That afternoon, we were standing on the street watching the parade. Hey, look at the billboard, Chris. The Tornado Rodeo, featuring the world famous outlaw greater than the Cougar. As far as I'm concerned, there never was a greater horse than Smokey. If we'd only known that this Cougar was Smokey. If you look at that, the junk wagon's joining the parade. Hey, look at that man with you. Pull up the rear. Where'd he come from, anyway? He was standing by that warehouse at the corner. Boy, is that junk in there. Stop, you no know, good sea bag. Come in. Whoa. Don't let you run away. I'll teach you plain time. Take it easy, mister. I said take it easy. I'll teach him to run away. He wouldn't yank on his mouth like that. He just wanted to get in the parade. Why don't you mind your own business? As for you, you... Sorry, mister. You're not using that whip on him, either. You bust that whip and I'll... You what? Never mind. I got my horse. Sure. Sure, I'll let go. It wouldn't hurt you to feed him once in a while, either. Come on, get up there. Hey, hey, look at him, Clint. That old nag. He's trying to get another look at you. Looks like you ain't a Hitler, huh? Hey? <laughs> sure does, doesn't it? Hey, say, I'm hungry. How about it? Let's go get something to eat. Well, the gentlemen. Hamburger, no engines, and Java. Same here. A lot of it. Say, did you notice before that, that horse, he had a star? Huh? That junkie's horse, he, he had a star on his forehead. All right, he had a star. What do you have? Uh, oh, I'll, I'll have the same. Thanks. You know, there was something about that old horse. Cool. Hey, where are you going? Oh, never mind. I'll, I'll see you later at the hotel. <laughs> Junk dealer, but I don't know what you're talking about, brother. I got my horse with a star, and I can't see him over here. Well, somebody must have him. I saw him today. He was trying to get into the parade. Yeah, he said you'd been over at Schultz and Brown's, and they didn't have him, and old lady Barry's got a truck, and like I said before, I ain't got him, so I guess that just about does it, son. Well, much obliged, anyway. Hey, wait a minute, Dick. Come to think of it, I did hear of a new man moving in the other side of Crow Creek. Where's that? Uh, east side of town. I they said his name was Mingo or something like that. Mingo. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, I'll find him. Hey, it sure looks like rain, don't it? What do you want? It's late. I ain't open after 7 o'clock. You, Mr. Mingo? I sure had a hard time finding you. Say, hey, you're the wise guy. What do you want here? I want to take a look at your horse. What for? 
Well, if he's the one I'm hoping he is, I'd like to buy him from you. Well, that's different, mister. I might sell him at that. Where is he? Out there and back. Wait a minute, I'll get a lantern. That's him, mister. That's the horse. Give me that lantern. A star on his forehead, yeah. Look at it. No. Oh, no, it couldn't. His feet. His eyes. His eyes. Smokey. Smokey. It's me, Smokey. It's me. When Clint brought Smokey back last week, I thought we'd have to shoot him. Well, he's taking him out of the barn today, turning him to the pasture. Look at him, Jeff. Mm. Mm. He'll be all right. Ain't that a picture now? Look at him. Well, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never seen a man so crazy about a horse in all my life. Hope I never do again. <laughs> Maybe now we'll get some work done around here. The valley, the valley so he just doesn't seem to believe he's home, does he, Clint? Give him a little time, honey. He will. Go on, Smokey. But you'd be anxious to get out the pasture. Sure, he's anxious. He's waited a long time for this, Julie. All right, boy. Go on. There it is. It's all yours. Go ahead. Oh, look at him, Clint. He just can't believe it. He can't believe it. Go ahead, Smokey. That's it, boy. Go ahead. Well, he believes it now. Clint, do you, you think you'll settle down for a while now? Yeah. Yeah, I think I'll settle down. Happy? Awful happy, Julie. Smokey is home now. He spills his night now, contentment is Happy postscript to Smokey as our stars appear in answer to your curtain call. Joel McRae and Constance Moore. <laughs> Joel, I don't know anyone better qualified to play a role like Clint Barkley than you yourself. Well, Bill, it's true. I just about grew up in a saddle. Is that how you first got into pictures, Joel? Well, in a way, you might say my first job was teaching Rudolph Valentino how to ride at four bucks a day. Four dollars a day. Yeah, and I had to supply the horses. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can imagine that was quite a promising association. Yes, Rudy introduced me to people like Bill Hart and Wally Reed, and the first thing I knew, I was riding in pictures as a double for Greta Garbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on now, Joel, not Greta Garbo. That's the truth. Remember, I was only 18 then, and a wig could make an awful lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> and so from doubling for Greta Garbo, you became a double for yourself. Good night. Good night. Good night, and our sincere thanks. This is William Keeley saying good night to you from Hollywood.